In the last video we discovered the Maclaurin series for the cosine of x and that it can be written explicitly as the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity, so it's an infinite sum of negative 1 to the power of n times x to the power of 2n divided by 2n factorial, or the factorial of 2n. In this video I want to demonstrate how to use this expression to derive the Maclaurin series for sine x. Now we know that when we differentiate sine of x, so if I write the differential of sine x as d on dx of sine x, we know that this is equal to cos of x. So it follows then that uh, sine x would be the integral of cos x with respect to x. That would mean it would be equal to the integral of the Maclaurin series for the cosine of x. with respect to x. So let's see how we go at uh, integrating this expression here. Alright, most of the terms in this expression can actually come outside of the integral because as you can see negative 1 to the n to the power of n is a constant in front of the variable that uh, we are concerned with and so is 2n factorial and the segment notation can also come out the front. So these elements can all come outside of the integral. So we can write the sum of n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n all over 2n factorial and then the integral of x to the 2n with respect to x. And now this is a very simple integral to perform. So if I write down what we have already, x to the 2n would simply integrate 2, x to the 2n plus 1, so this is a power integral, divided by the new power, so 2n plus 1. And now we can actually combine these two terms together, so the factorial and the 2n plus 1, because simply this 2n plus 1 is simply the next term from 2n. Now say, for example, if n was equal to 3, and we have 2n is equal to 6, then the factorial, 2n factorial would simply be equal to 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 and 2n plus 1 is simply the next term so we are multiplying by 7 so this would equal actually 7 factorial or uh, generally it would be 2n plus 1 factorial so we can rewrite this as the sum from n is equal to 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the power of n divided by 2n plus 1 factorial times x to the 2n plus 1. And that is the explicit form of and that is the explicit form of the Maclaurin series for the sine of x. Now let's write this out with just the first few terms. So sine of x is equal to negative 1 to the power of 0 is 1 times uh, x to the power of, so 2 times 0 plus 1 is equal to x, so times x, and uh, 2 times 0 plus 1 is 1 factorial. So 1 factorial is simply equal to 1, so 1 factorial plus 
x to the power of 1 is negative 1 times x to the power of 2 times 1 plus 1 is x to the power of 3 divided by 3 factorial positive 1 times x to the power of 2 times 2 plus 1 is x to the fifth divided by 5 factorial and then plus a negative 1 to the power of 3 is negative 1 times x to the seventh on 7 factorial and then plus uh, the, uh, so on and so forth and tidying this up we get x minus x to the power of 3 on 3 factorial plus x to the fifth on 5 factorial minus x to the seventh on 7 factorial and plus uh, ad infinitum. Now let's compare that with cos of x if we write that out in the first few terms for its Maclaurin series and uh, cos of x we know to be equal to 1 minus x to the power of 2 on 2 factorial plus x to the power of 4 on 4 factorial minus x to the power of 6 on 6 factorial and plus so on and so forth and what is interesting here is that sine is a uh, defined as a odd function and cos is an even function and an odd function is a function such that when you plug in f of the negative of x it is equal to the negative of the f of positive x and an even function is such that when you uh, plug in uh, a negative value for x or, or negative x it comes out to be equal to just the f of x so it's interesting to note that uh, sine being an odd, odd function we have odd powers for its uh, Maclaurin polynomial and no even powers and with cos being an even function we only have even its whoops in its Maclaurin polynomial polynomial and no odd powers all right and that is how we find the Maclaurin series for sine x thanks for watching and I hope you've learned something and if you found this video helpful please give me a thumbs up and by the way here is a plot of sine x represented by the blue curve and our Maclaurin approximation represented by the red curve of degree 7 so let me write that down Maclaurin and that's x to the seventh power and this is sine x and as you can see centered about the origin the Taylor or the Maclaurin approximation is extremely accurate and according to Wikipedia between this interval negative 1 and 1 the error between these two curves for the seventh degree polynomial is less than 3 by 10 to the negative 6 so that's a very very accurate estimate of sine x even just with a 7 degree polynomial approximation of it